Let me just say, I didn't learn any of this while I was in college for theater, and I think I should have. What is up everybody? It's your girl Tyra and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, welcome. I am so glad to have you. Here on this channel, I create resources for black creatives who want to escape fear and share their creativity with the world without compromising their faith in God, their integrity, their uniqueness, and without breaking the bank. So I have a question for you. What did you learn in school if you went to school for acting that has stuck with you? If your schooling was anything like mine, then you probably learned acting technique, maybe took a script analysis class, or even learned a few dialects here or there, with a huge chunk of your studies being theater history. But the thing that I wish I'd learned during my years in college were common terms used in the industry. Today, we're gonna to dive into some of those vocabulary words that will be great to know as you enter the real world as an actor who wants to cultivate a career in TV and film. Let's get right into it. The first word is sides. So sides Sides are pages from a script that are used for an audition or to shoot the project with. So you may hear this term used, refer to the sides for your audition. SAG E. Now this simply means you are SAG eligible. You are eligible to join the SAG after union. How do you achieve SAG E status? Well, there are a few ways that you can, but the way I'd like to highlight is by obtaining vouchers for working as an actor. Background works counts too, but we'll touch on that in another video. I don't suggest that's the way you get your vouchers. For your work to qualify, you must work three days of work as a background actor or one day of work as a principal or have a speaking role. On a veil. So on a veil means a casting director has asked you to keep specific dates available for potential shoot days. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are booked, but it's a good sign. Holding. Holding is a designated area for all background talent. This is where they wait until it's time for you to be called to sit. Residuals. Y'all, I just got two residual checks in the mail. <sighs> Let me just say, like they really be coming in clutch. But anyways, residuals are kind of like royalties. This is the money that anyone involved in the making of the production receives once the project is out, from syndication, streaming, etc. You receive a check in the mail every time your project airs. Residuals are so good, y'all. So like I said, I just got two in the mail. I'm still receiving residuals from the very first episode I ever filmed of Family Reunion. And I did a foot commercial earlier this year and I still get residuals from that as well. Now. Now on the flip side of a residual, our next term is a buyout. A buyout is a lump sum of money or a flat fee paid to actors for a project. These are given in lieu of residuals. So you would typically receive a buyout on a low budget project or non-union commercials. And these payments are typically less than what you receive would receive if you were getting residuals. So I received a buyout for the Daisy Sour Cream commercial I did. As I think about it, because I was still new, I wish that my agent would have fought for a session fee and residual pay. But sometimes they just ain't got it in the budget, especially if it is a non-union commercial or show or a ultra low budget show. Which leads me to my next term, agent. There are different types of agents out there, but the simplest way to put it is your talent agent submits you to castings. You can have agents that represent you in different markets, like a commercial agent, print agent, voiceover agent, modeling agent, etc. But their main job is to get you booked and busy. So typically they take between 10 to 20% of your acting earnings. It'll be in your contract whenever you go to sign with them, or you can ask them beforehand if you're shopping around. Now I do have some agent horror stories that I would honestly love to share with y'all. So if you would like to know more about my experience with finding an agent and how agents was stealing money from me and all of that stuff, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to make a video like that for you guys if you're interested. So you have your agent, but on the flip side, you have a manager. Well, I don't know why I said flip side, but manager. Your manager is really a business manager. They help you to plan for long-term success of your career. They may also submit you to castings, but it probably won't be as frequently or as high yield as an agent, but they are in it for the long haul. They typically take 10 to 15% of any earnings you make as an actor. Next up is union. So union refers to a type of labor union that represents the interest of actors working in the film, TV, and theater industries. The most well-known one that you probably heard of is sag After, which stands for Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. That's so long. But there are other ones like Actors Equity Association, which is AEA for live theater. So these unions were created specifically to protect 
us, you guys. They have implemented regulations regarding pay scales because they used to be tripping in the past, royalties, and created contracts designed to best serve member performers. And you pay a membership fee to be a part of these organizations. And if I do this video about my agent horror stories, I'll let you know why being a part of a union is so important. But long story short, after some bad stuff happened with my previous agent, I called SAG because I was SAG. They were like, well, um, are you represented by a SAG affiliated uh, uh, agent looked it up no I was not so they could not help me so long story short unions are great to be a part of there are pros and cons to everything in life but if you would like a video on diving deeper into that let me know that in the comments as well non-union so non-union includes every production that is not produced under a union contract which means there can be no established rules to follow it could be a good thing could be a bad thing it depends on the project but these types of projects are easier for non-union actors which are actors who have not yet joined SAG or another union to book. Recurring role. So a recurring role is a role that recurs in more than one episode of a show but is hired on a per episode basis rather than being hired as a series regular role. So for example my role on the hit Netflix TV show Family Reunion was a recurring role. I played young Amelia who is a younger version of the one and only Miss Loretta Devine. Day player. So a day player is an actor who is hired on a daily basis versus a long-term contract basis. Or for example, if you were to work on a network show for one day with a speaking role, you may be hired as a day player. So I was hired as a day player my first time on set for Family Reunion. I guess they didn't really know the, the arc of my character at the time, but the alternative to this would be to have a contracted agreement. So for the first episode of Family Reunion, I was a day player for two days. And then for every episode I did after that, I was contracted as a recurring role. Which leads me to my next word, co star and now it's starting to make sense as I think about it right now but a co-star is a small speaking role within one episode of the show these roles are typically not about the main storyline of the show and to be honest when I checked the credits of the very first episode of Family Reunion I was labeled as a co-star now that could go hand in hand with why I was also contracted as a day player because we didn't yet know when I would be back on the on the show so a co-star role is a very small speaking role but if you did book a co-star star role depending on the role you book you can come back for more roles and be upgraded to a recurring role or even a guest starring role. Next we're going to talk about principal role. So a principal role refers to an actor with a major role in the production. So throughout my career thus far I have mainly heard this term used in commercial acting because I was a principal in the Daisy Sour Cream commercial that I booked back in 2020 and I was also a principal for a Nutribullet print shoot that I booked in 2019. Next up is stand-in. Y'all, I was just a stand-in yesterday for a short film um, for one of my friends. We were on a family reunion together. It was so great. But a stand-in is exactly as it sounds. This is a role that does not make it to TV or on the screen. A stand-in is a background actor or extra who literally stands in for the principal actor, whether it's for technical purposes or blocking. So if they're trying to set up the shot or if they're trying to figure out what the movement will be we'll use a stand-in instead of using the actual actor because honestly the blocking and setting up the shot can take forever to be honest but being a stand-in is not horrible they're actually very 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 important Next up, we have SAG day rate. The SAG day rate is the daily rate set by the Screen Actors Guild. As of 2022, that day rate is $370. This rate is also paid to non-union actors who are working on union projects, but it doesn't necessarily apply to background or extras. A green actor, you gotta know this term, especially if you're just breaking into the industry, but a green actor is an actor who has very little to no industry experience, a freshman if you will. So if you hear someone say you're green or you're green behind the ears, this is all that they mean. Next up, we have open call. Y'all, I ain't gonna lie, I despise open calls. But an open call is an audition, especially for actors or dancers, open to anyone wishing to try out. So these auditions are typically open to the public and they are typically showcased on public websites. Now, like I said, I don't really care for these, but if you're looking to do open calls for theater or Broadway, these could actually get your foot in the door. And our last term is 
getting signed. These are the words that we love to hear y'all. So this means you now have a person or a group of people, your talent agent or your agency working with you to get auditions. You are now represented by this person or people and they are able to submit you for auditions, pitch you for roles, follow up on submissions and auditions, negotiate better pay and better contracts and renegotiate your existing contracts that you may have. Getting signed is a huge goal for every new actor. Now, I know a lot of you guys are very new to the acting world, or maybe you just recently graduated from college and are starting out in this career field, and I have a surprise for you. So, oh my God, I have written my first book, y'all. The Little Black Book for Theater Majors. And I have started a wait list for those of you who are interested. This book is filled with the acting terminology, like these terms we just went through in this video, they were pulled straight from the book, but there is so much more where that came from. I just wanted to create a resource that I wish I would have had when I was graduating from college. It would have made my life so much easier to have something like this. And I dove into the real world as a green actor and I just, I did it on a wing and a prayer. So if you are interested in receiving an alert when the book goes live, click the link down below to join the waitlist. You do not have to pay to sign up to be a part of the waitlist, but anyone who does join the waitlist will receive a special discount when my book goes live. Y'all got a book? I can't believe I have a book. Okay, we'll talk more about it later, but if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please hit that big red subscribe button down below and make sure your notifications are on y'all. I have, first of all, most of y'all who watch my videos are not subscribed. Please subscribe because that helps me out so, so much. Like 90% of my audience is not subscribed. But anyway, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get all of the alerts anytime I post any new acting videos. And thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.